Okay, so this is the object that we're going to find the surface area and the volume of. This is a, a, a hex nut, right? It's not a bolt, it's the thing that will go on the bolt. Now, um, it's a hex nut because its cross section is a hexagon, hexagon. So we know that the base shape is a hexagonal prism. And then there's a hole drilled in. A couple things we know, and we're going to go ahead and, and pull this information out of here. Uh, we know that the uh, width of the object, the whole width, is a half inch. We know it says 5 sixteenths, so that means that the diameter of our object, or excuse me, our diameter of our circle in here is 5 sixteenths. And we know that it has a height of 17 sixty-fourths. So let's go ahead and transfer that over to our information. All right. So we knew that the width was half an inch. We knew that the height was 1764. And then the diameter was 5 sixteenths. So what we're going to go ahead and do is put these into decimal units. Now, I mean, could we use fractions? Totally fine. But we're going to end up wanting to get a decimal out of this. So let's go ahead and calculate out of decimals. Uh, one half, pretty easy for us. Uh, 0.517 over 64. And 5 sixteenths divided by 2, because I'm going to end up wanting the radius out of this. So my radius is 0.156. Now, a couple things that I'm going to think about. If I want to find the area of that hexagon, I want that area of the hexagon. I'm going to start by drawing that triangle. Right? And by now we're really good at drawing these triangles, and we should be pretty good because, well, you know, we've done this so often that it should become second nature to us. The only kind of weird thing is that we don't have a dimension other than the fact that we know the width is a half inch. So that means that this whole dimension here is a half an inch. So this piece is going to be what? 0.25. And that's 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and so on and so forth. Now, a couple cool things that we know, and the reason why we use hexagons a lot in geometry class. This is an equilateral triangle. So if that's 0.25, then this is 0.25. So to find the height, I'm going to split this triangle in two. And in fact, when I split that triangle in two, I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And we use 30, 60, 90s all the time. You can use sine, cosine, tangent if you want for this. Or you can go through and use the 30, 60, 90. And in the interest of time, We'll go ahead and call this 0.125 radical 3. And I can get a decimal off of that, which is 0.217. All right, so much like my previous ones, I'm going to go ahead and calculate the area of the base, the perimeter of the base, area of the circle, perimeter of that circle. So area of the base. Okay, well, all right, so I need to, I'm, I'm going to calculate the area of the triangle, and then how many triangles are there? All right, so I get that one times six, so six triangles, and that individual one is one half, 0.25 times 0.217. And if I calculate that, so that would be. 0.1628. The n minus 2 times 180 gives me the sum of the interior angles, which I, I could use, but using the central angle to do that one is going to be faster for us. Okay. Good question. All right, perimeter of the base. 
Well, I've got six sides that are 0.25. So 6 times 0.25. And that's going to be 1.5. And now let's figure out my circle, right? Because I, I again have a circle that's in here. So area of the circle. Well, that's going to be pi times my radius, 0.156. Squared, and that's going to be 0 0.0764. And I'm going to find the perimeter of that circle. It should be a circle. And that's going to be 2 times pi times my radius, 0.156. And that value is 0.98. Zero. All right. Messing up the pen there, but beautiful. Now, from here, I'm just going to put this all together to start calculating my surface area. So, what I want to do is to think through that surface area. We said that the area of the surface is going to be the area of that prism, and we'll split it up this time instead of writing out one big one. So area of the prism minus 2 times the area of my circles plus the perimeter of my circle. Now, now, I'm going to go through and put in my information here. So, area, surface area of my prism. We'll put that in. So that's going to be 2 times the area of the base. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to put it in there uh, all as one. plus the perimeter of the base, 1.5, times my height, which we said the height was 0.266, plus, minus that, minus, six, minus 2 times the area of my circle, which is 0 0.0764 plus the perimeter of that circle, which is 0 0.980. Yeah, yeah, I could put it in 0.98. And then my height, which is 0.266. I, I would multiply that. Right? So, again, this is the prism part. This is that area of the circle, and then that part is that uh, next piece, which I forgot to put that in. And I'll get a value out of that. 0.31? Okay. So, uh, 0.628 plus 3.5. I got point eight three two for the whole thing. All right. Now, because I have that surface area, because I have the individual pieces, to do the volume of this object is going to be pretty simple. I'll let you guys double check my calculations of that while I do the volume. Now, to do the volume, my volume of the total thing is just going to be the volume of that prism minus the volume of the cylinder. And because I did all that stuff up here, I can just plug that information in. So, the volume of the prism, area of the base. 0.1628 times the height, 
0.266 minus the volume of the cylinder, which is the area of the circle, 0 0.0764 times the height, which is 0.266. And 1628 times 0 0.666 minus 0 0.0764 times 0 0.266. And I get a volume of 0.0. 0 0.023 inches. Now, again, all I've done is I've taken these things and I've split them up into smaller bits. Compound objects are just a series of small things put together. My calculations are right? Yeah. yeah.